everyone, and welcome to this very special Puffin Virtually Live show, starring one of my favourite authors, Jacqueline Wilson! Yay! Hello, Jacqueline! How are you? Very well, thank you, Katie. Very happy to be here today. Well, we are very pleased that you are here. Lots of fans of yours are here and also watching uh, from their schools. Now, in today's show, Jackie is going to be telling us all about her new book, Wave Me Goodbye. And she's going to be giving you some ideas to help with your entry for the Jacqueline Wilson Writing Prize. There's going to be more on that a little bit later on. It's very exciting. But first, Wave Me Goodbye is set in World War II and it's all about Shirley who gets evacuated out to a big red house in the countryside. Now, on our set today, we've got a few posters from wartime. So, Jacqueline, could you tell us a little bit more about that? Well, I expect you've all seen those posters, Keep Calm and Carry On. Yeah. And in 1939, at the start of the Second World War, the government issued these posters. And actually, I think it's a very good motto. So let's all of us keep calm and carry on today. Please give us a cheer if you're going to keep calm and carry on. Yeah! Good. Hopefully everybody watching is going to keep calm and carry on as well. It's an excellent motto. Uh, now, I'm sure lots of children watching, especially those at Great Steeping, St. Peter's and Thornhill, would really like to know, and I'd like to know this as well. Uh, what inspired you to write Wave Me Goodbye? Well, I was born after the Second World War, but I grew up knowing quite a few older people who had actually been evacuated, who had been sent to the country to live in safety. But I found it quite extraordinary that hundreds of thousands of children from big cities were sent away like this without their mums and dads, and they just were sent to live with strangers. And so I thought, I would like to write a story about this. It's fascinating, isn't it? Has anybody here learnt about World War II in school? Well, give us a cheer if you've, you've learnt about World War II. Yeah, yeah I, I, I thought you might. I'm sure you have. I'm sure lots of you watching have as well. And what a fascinating idea that you could be sent away uh, to a completely different place without your family. Uh, now, Jackie, you took a trip to the Imperial War Museum uh, with some of our Puffin reporters uh, to find out a little bit more about life in wartime. Now, I'm going to show you a clip and I want you all to watch very closely because after this video, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions, all right? I want to know how many changes of clothes evacuees were allowed to pack with them. And I also want to know what is the name of the shelter built to protect people from air raids. So watch this clip very carefully. I'm here at the Imperial War Museum in their special family at war section because I want to show some children exactly what it was like to be evacuated in the Second World War and there are all sorts of interesting things to show them. Now, what are these weird, scary-looking things? Gas masks. gas masks. People were so scared that there would be horrible gassing, and this is a horrible way to die being gassed. And so everybody was issued with a gas mask, and wherever you went, you had to take your gas mask with you. This photo, it shows actual real children being evacuated. There are mums there. They look pretty worried. I've spoken to, to real people, elderly people, even older than me, who um, said that they quite enjoyed being evacuated in the country and had fun. But there are some other people too that thought it was a terrible experience. Here is this tiny suitcase. And when children in 1939 um, maybe it could be, say, your great granny, your great granddad. When they had to be evacuated because people were so terrified that they would be bombed and killed, they were sent away with just that tiny suitcase. All they had to take was one change of clothes and they might have been going for months, even years. Now here is an actual letter the little girl called Dorothy wrote and she wrote it back to her mum. Um, in those days, I think nearly everybody called their mums mummy and their dad's daddy. Some, sometimes people still do now. And this was way before the time of, of mobile phones or emails or anything. So your post was the only way of keeping in touch. Often when children were sent away, 
their parents or whoever looks after them didn't know where they were going and didn't even know who was going to be looking after them, which, you know, as a mum myself, would send me completely mad, not knowing who was looking after my daughter. If you weren't evacuated and you stayed in your big city, um, then to actually shelter from the bombs, you would go into something like this, the Anderson shelter. There were lots of shelters in the countryside too, because in the village where I imagine my children, Shirley, Kevin and Archie, the children in the book, where they go, um, I've based it pretty much on a village that I know well. And certainly in the house that I know in the village, there is still an Anderson shelter like this. People made these themselves. You were given a kit and shown how to erect it. Uh, who here can tell me, who was watching very carefully, and who here can tell me how many items of clothing an evacuee uh, could take? Shout it out, shout out the answer. One! One item of clothing, I mean, that is pretty stinky, isn't it? <laughs> I, I bet you guys have got some stinky uniforms that you're wearing that you've worn for more than one day, so imagine. Everyone have a little smell of uniform, I bet it's a bit stinky, isn't it? Yeah, if you've worn it all week, it's probably a bit smelly. So there you go, one item of clothing, unbelievable. Uh, and I want hands up for this one. Who thinks they know the name of the shelter that you might have had in your garden? Anyone think they know this? The Anderson Shelter. The Anderson Shelter, very well done indeed. Uh, now, if you would like to see your school name on the screen down here, uh, tell us what you would take if you were evacuated and uh, send in your school shout outs. All you need to do is get your teacher to tweet us at Puffin Books using the hashtag Jacqueline Wilson Show. We would absolutely love to give you a shout out. Now, Jacqueline, we covered it a little bit in the video, but what actually happened to children on the day they were evacuated? Well, they were told to go to the biggest mainline station and perhaps your, your mum or dad would take you there and then you joined up with your schools and then off you were sent to the country. You didn't actually know where you were going. You just had to make the best of it. You had your little suitcase, you had your gas mask, and you had a label on your coat or your jacket to say who you were. Wow. Now, shall we act it out? I, I need one girl and one boy volunteer. Who's it gonna be? Oh, have we got two people ready? So what are your names? Paris. Paris. Yes. And tell me, you, you look very cool and modern. Um, I think we need to make you look more like children in 1939. So we've got a few clothes for you to dress up in and you can have a proper label pinned on you to show who you actually are. So if you'd like to, to go, um, someone will show you where to go just to just pop something there. on. If you follow okay. our helper, give him a big round of applause. We're gonna get changed into a vacuum outfit. I cannot wait to see what your classmates are going to look like as evacuees. Uh, while those guys get changed, we've actually got some questions from schools for you, Jackie. Okay. Uh, so Primary 4 in Ecole International University in Belgium uh, wants Ooh. to know, did you interview a lot of evacuees for research for the book? Right. I talked to people when I was growing up who had actually experienced it themselves. Then, when I came to write the book, I read several big volumes of social history, which had accounts from people who had lived through this whole situation. And then when I felt I knew enough about it, I just stopped all the research and imagined how I would feel in that situation and started writing. Amazing. Well, what a good writing tip there for, from, from one of the best writers that we know. Uh, so, you know, we're going to talk about the Jacqueline Wilson Creative Writing Prize a little bit later on, but that's probably a good tip to remember, isn't it? Just totally imagining a situation that you've not been in like that. Uh, we've got a question here from Year 4 at Our Ladies Witness who asks, why do you think stories from the past are important? I think it's important to try and imagine ourselves in other times. We get far more insight that way. And sometimes we can learn lessons from the past. And I find it just fascinating. And I hope lots of other children do too. Uh, now, I think our evacuees might be ready. Are we ready back there? <laughs> oh, here uh, they come. Oh, you look wonderful. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. 
mean, look at Paris and Yassine. They look amazing, don't they? Give them another big clap. Yeah. You've got your tags on and everything. You look Perfect. like proper evacuees. It's like going back in time looking at you two right now, isn't it? Uh, now, while you're up here and you've got your microphones, do you have a question for Jacqueline? What happened when the evacuees arrived in the countryside? When the evacuees arrived, they were sent to a village hall and, and they were probably a bit travel stained and not looking at their best. And the villagers came in and nobody was told, right, you have to take these two children and those two children. What happened is the villagers walked all round and looked at you and decided, do we want this one? Do we want that one? And I think it must be horrible sitting there waiting, thinking, pick me, pick me. Or if they were very scary looking, don't pick me, <laughs> whatever. So um, I, think that I think children were made of quite strong stuff to be able to put up with that then. How exciting. It's Shirley's first time ever going on a train. It is, it? it is. I mean, I go on a lot of trains, and she must find them a bit boring now. But back then, if you'd never been on a train, you'd find it quite exciting, wouldn't you? What's your question? Did evacuees get to go with their friends or teachers? Ah, well, friends, if you had friends, <laughs> you, you could sit with them. Um, I hope there would be some sort of shuffling around the corridors so you didn't have to sit next to your worst enemy or whatever. And there were other children from different schools on the train. But I know a lot of teachers weren't able to accompany the children. So they had ladies called WVS ladies in uniform who sort of walked up and down. And if you're feeling ill, they might help you get along to the toilet or something like that. So the children did have some grown-ups looking after them, but it was still a pretty strange journey. Well, you certainly both look the part, but our evacuees are actually missing something very important, aren't they, Jackie? Gas masks. Gas masks. So you thought you might get away with it, <laughs> but I'm afraid not. I have a gas mask here for each of you, so you can put those on. Uh, okay. They look pretty creepy, <laughs> don't they? Uh, but everybody in the, during the Second World War had to have their gas masks and actually had to keep them with them at all time because we were so scared that the enemy would drop poisonous gas on us. So everybody had their gas masks. Ooh, <laughs> they do, really do look scary. And also, there were even gas masks made for babies. Can you imagine? <gasps> well, there you go. Can you imagine how it would have felt to just be bundled up with all the other children uh, and sent on a train away from home? It, it probably would have been quite scary. I certainly can't imagine what it would have been like. Uh, but our Puffin reporters have been thinking about how it might feel. Have a watch of this. If I was evacuated during the Second World War, it would have been very scary going to someone that you probably didn't know, but also very, you'd feel very relieved. If I would have been evacuated, I'd be terrified. If I was evacuated, I would feel scared and worried because I'm leaving my friends and family and I don't know where, what would happen. It probably would have been scary because you'd be far away from your parents. <laughs> So as you can see there, everybody seems to think it's quite scary. I think it would be quite scary to go away from home on your own. I think I would really like to take something with me, uh, Jackie, to sort of make me feel a little bit better. And people did do that, didn't they? They did indeed, though the suitcases they were told to take were very small. If you think about the suitcase you take if you go on holiday for a fortnight, it's a huge great thing. Some of these children were evacuated for years. So you had that change your clothing and your washing things and your night things and um, you were told you could take one toy just mm. one for all that time just one thing so, imagine that uh, well we want to know what your one thing would be so uh, if you're watching from a school or a library keep tweeting us get your teachers to tweet at puffin books and tell us what would you pack in your tiny bag um, we would la love to see your school shouted out down here so use the hashtag jacqueline at wilson show and tweet us now and let's ask our audience our live audience who are here with us i'm going to use this magical piece of equipment here <laughs> uh, which can't be one of your items that you take away it could be i suppose but it'd be a bit strange uh, and i'm going to throw this out to members of the audience so i want you to think about what's the thing that 
that you take everywhere with you now? Do you have something that maybe you've got on you today? Uh, a piece of technology or something that you won't go anywhere without? If you were going to pack a bag now, a small suitcase with one item in it, what would it be? Put your hand up, I'm going to throw the bowl and you have to speak into the circle. Okay, who's ready? Young man at the back there, your hand went up first, so there you go. I will take uh, my phone because I can call my mum. Your phone, because you can call your mum. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, that's uh, that solves lots of problems with uh, communication, doesn't it? I think we probably all agree we can't live without things like our phones these days. I certainly can't. I would take my guitar so that I could write songs and I would never be bored. Oh, and because I love to play guitar. That is a great idea. Yeah, really good idea. That'll keep you busy. And let's get one more. What about you, Danny, young lady? I would take a copy of Wave Me Goodbye. Uh, <laughs> well, there you go, Jacqueline. Lots of ideas there about what people would take with them. These are brilliant ideas, but some of them, like nobody had f mobile phones then, and if you thought you could take your tablet, say, if you're lucky enough to have one, no, that wasn't invented either. Now, Jackie, we talked a little bit about how Shirley is a rebel and she crammed 10 books mm -hmm. uh, into her suitcase. Which book would you take if you could only choose one? Do you know, I think, certainly if I were 10 going on 11 like Shirley, I'd choose um, Shirley's Choice, Bally Shoes by Noah Stretfield, which is a book about girls at stage school. I adored it. I read it again and again. And I loved the illustrations and kept copying them very, very carefully. Well, it's funny you should mention illustrations, actually, Jackie, because I was just going to get on to uh, your illustrations, of course. This book looks absolutely brilliant. Uh, does anybody know the name of the person who illustrates all of Jackie's books? Nick Sharon. Yes, well done, well done indeed. Um, and now I think you've got some pens and papers at the ready. Hopefully, if you're watching in your classrooms, you have some pens and paper as well, uh, because Nick himself is going to show you how to draw Shirley from Wave Me Goodbye. So make sure you're all drawing along in our live audience here and in your classrooms. And if you are in a classroom, then share a picture of what you've done on Twitter. Uh, just ask your teachers to tweet at Puffin Books with your creations. We would love to see them. Over to Nick. Hello, I'm Nick Sharrett. I drew the pictures for Wave Me Goodbye. And right now, we're all going to have a go at drawing Shirley. So get your pens ready. OK, so let's draw Shirley. We're going to start off with Shirley's face. Okay, so the next thing to draw are Shirley's features. So we're drawing her nose over to one side, like that. And she's feeling a little bit sad about uh, being evacuated, so she's got a small smile, a little nervous little smile, and a little line for her bottom lip. And then her eyes, and her eyebrows are looking a little bit worried, like that. And with her other arm, she's waving goodbye. So draw that arm pointing upwards like that. And we'll come back to her other hand later on, because before then we're going to draw her skirt. She's wearing a pleated skirt, quite a long skirt, comes down over her knees. So draw the two sides of the skirt and then do a zigzaggy line across the bottom like that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to move down to her legs and we're going to draw her legs. Right, now we can come back to her hand, which is holding the suitcase. Now I left it because the suitcase goes behind her skirt. So let's draw a thumb coming down like that. And then we can draw the suitcase handle. And the rest of the hand behind the handle like that. And this suitcase is a big suitcase that belongs to her dad. So draw the top of the suitcase and then one side of the suitcase like that. Draw the bottom of the suitcase that goes behind her leg so you can just see it here and then add a few details to your suitcase. So 
And, oh, I know, I've forgotten a very important detail. She's uh, got a box that contains her gas mask because all children are given gas masks in case of an emergency. So draw the box, start off with a diamond shape and then add the sides of the box like that. And you can then add the straps that hang over her shoulder. So there's her gas mask box. I'm going to just add a little bit more hair just to make the shape of her head a bit better. Okay. And then she is wearing her very best fair isle jumper, so I'm going to draw a pattern on that. And three bands in each arm. Quite a complicated pattern, but you could invent your own pattern. Feral jumpers are beautiful, but they are very complicated. So I invented this own um, this pattern for this jumper. Okay, and I think that's everything. So here's my finished Shirley. I wonder how yours have turned out. Wow, well let's have a look at your creations. We've got some budding illustrators here in the audience. Hold them up for us. Excellent, so many Shirleys. Oh, we're getting some finishing touches over there. <laughs> Come on guys, time's up. Let's see, let's see how far you got. <laughs> Amazing. I can see lots of different coloured shirleys. I can see some red shirleys and some green shirleys. And I came out and I had a little look around at what you were doing. And it's such intricate detail, Jackie, but they did such a good job. You were, you were really watching Nick and you were very slowly drawing. It was very well done indeed. <laughs> um, but speaking of which, Jackie, how long have you worked with Nick for? Um, ages and ages. I think it's about 27, 28 years wow. now. But I'm so, so lucky to have Nick as my illustrator. I mean, we're great friends anyway, but he always does such absolutely superb work and really makes my books look good and come alive. Yeah, he certainly does. This cover looks absolutely amazing. Really does make you want to pick up the book and read it, doesn't it? Who here wants to read Wave Me Goodbye? Who's already oh. read some of Wave Me Goodbye? No. Has anyone already read all of it? No, <laughs> Just some. That would be very quick work. <laughs> um, well, we've seen what Shirley looks like. We've seen how to draw her. Now let's find out a little bit more about how she's getting on. We've got a letter from Shirley. Dear Mum, I've already been here so long that my red paint and shoes don't fit me anymore. But I'm still not used to waking up and hearing the birds outside my window instead of the London traffic. This is such a strange old house with a huge wild garden. There's a brilliant library. Mrs. Wave Waverley loves books almost as much as I do. Here's, here's even a mysterious locked room. Maybe it's hiding a secret. But I don't like the boys I'm stuck with here. I miss you and Dad. Where, when will the war be over so we can be together again? Love, Shirley. Like uh, lots is going to happen to Shirley, possibly more than she can fit on one postcard. Uh, but that does bring us on to something very exciting at uh, the Jacqueline Wilson Creative Writing Prize. Uh, this year to end, so you have to write a letter to someone who lives far away, and the winning letter will be published in an upcoming Jacqueline Wilson novel. How amazing! Uh, the winner will also receive a hundred pounds worth of books, the chance to meet Jackie, and a one year subscription to the children's newspaper First News. I mean, what an absolutely fantastic prize! I was a budding writer when I was your age, I still am, and I would have loved to enter that competition. So I bet loads of you cannot wait to start writing that letter. Who here in the studio audience wants to enter that competition? Put your hand if you do. Brilliant, I'm sure you do and I'm sure lots of you watching from your schools as well want to enter. So how exciting, get thinking about your letter. You could write to absolutely anyone. Who would you want to write a letter to? The world is your oyster. Um, now we're coming to the end, I'm afraid, but I just want to say thank you very much to our studio audience here and to all the teachers, schools and libraries tuning in around the world. Uh, thank you very much and let's give a huge round of applause <laughs> to the incredible Jacqueline Wilson. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you.
very much. And good luck to everyone entering the Jacqueline Wilson Creative Writing Prize. What a fantastic competition. Make sure you get involved. We'll be back after the summer holidays with the annual Roll Doll Day extravaganza on the 13th of September. Until then, all that's left to do is to wave goodbye. Bye! <laughs> Bye! There's a park round the corner and there's a shopping centre only 10 minutes away and the garden's massive and it's got a pond. Mum and Dad have bought us a trampoline and I play on it every day. Thank you again so much. We all really appreciate it and can't wait until you come and stay. Please, please write back saying when you can come. Love, Ola. Dear Ella, I thought I'd better write to you to find out how you are. I'm fine. How is it in New York? Here in London it's raining every day. School hasn't changed a lot. Miss Honey is still our teacher. Gymnastics is still the same every day. Everyone misses you there, but we've got a new gymnastics teacher called, her, called Olivia. I've heard that you have a new pet dog, but guess what? I've got one too. Her name's called Millie. Maybe our dogs could be friends. Dear Auntie, Recently I have been thinking about you, so I decided to write you a letter. I hope you are very well. Miss you so much.